Hey, welcome to another video on electrical repair. And in this video, we're going to repair that same wiring harness. However, we're going to use a different method. Um, we're going to use butt connectors and solder connectors. So we're not going to be using the soldering iron in this video. Uh, let's take a look how uh, this repair is performed. And in this one, once again, uh, we have that doggone wiring harness that uh, just seems to always keep breaking. And we're going to go ahead and use those different methods. Um, in this one, I have two wires that are broken, uh, different gauges. So this is going to give me an opportunity to go ahead and use those different style repairs. Um, like with soldering, we're going to go ahead and take some of the uh, some of the uh, heating off, and I'm going to start with the, the larger gauge wire. And I'm going to do these one at a time. Um, larger gauge first and then we'll go ahead with the, uh, the smaller gauge wire and here I'm going to grab some of the, the choices that we have um, and in this case uh, these are the two style connectors that I'm talking about we have a um, just a regular crimp connector or butt connector two wires butted together with a connector um, and these are going to look a little bit different this is a solder connector and it has shrink tube uh, incorporated with it so you don't need to use that soldering iron maybe you're not so good with it um, you can go this route they do look different and keep in mind that these connectors do come in three different sizes sort of a small medium large okay uh, on this one I'm gonna just use the crimp connector and on this one instead of fanning out the, the wires I'm sort of bundling them together and going to go ahead and put those together just like that. Um, and of course now we're going to need our crimping pliers. And depending on um, you know what you like, uh, we have many different choices here. Uh, these are kind of you know, pretty much the common. They have wire strippers and they have the butt connector on there. Um, these also do as well. These are snap-on and of course, you know me, pretty much everything is snap-on. Uh, these have wire strippers and butt connectors. They're just down on the bottom. So you get a couple different styles. What I like about these is that once, you're, um, once you strip the wire, you can go ahead and crimp it from the top with the pliers. And the problem with these is that if you're working in a real tight space, you strip the wire. Now look what you have to do. You have to go like this and bring it over top of the wire, which it does work, okay? However, you could see how kind of clumsy one could be with that. So I always try and get uh, two pairs, um, get ones that have the strippers on top and another pair that has the crimpers on the top. This way you're, you're good either way. Or you can just get the dedicated crimping pliers and these have a little bit larger handles. They give you a little bit more, you know, power there. So. We'll take one at a time, and I'm going to try and keep my hands out of the way so you can see. Um, maybe what I could even do is get this camera down even closer. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and put that connector back on there. All right, I'm holding it in tight, and I'll crimp one side first. And then let's go after the other side. All right. And that works. As you can see, uh, the connector is, or the wire is repaired rather. Um, the next step is going to be you're going to have to coat that with some electrical tape. And we're going to go ahead and do that. 
Um, as in the other video, I showed you how to make that big roll of tape into a little roll of tape. So I'm going to do that again. And I'm putting some uh, tape onto my socket. Because the problem that uh, we do run into with these butt connectors is you can see moisture. If I can put this piece of solder wire in there, that also means moisture is going to get in there as well. So we've got to tape them up. They do make a liquid uh, electrical tape. However, I've, I've never used it. Um, bead sealer does work really well if you want to low tech it. Um, however, you know, whenever we use those crimp connectors, again, I can't stress enough that you do absolutely need to seal that wire up. Okay. And as we look at that repair, we we probably sometimes might say, well, geez, that's not as good as solder, all right? But that is a crimp connector, and those crimp connectors are fairly common to uh, a lot of automotive repair shops out there. Um, probably the best way uh, out there now is going to be the way that uh, I'm going to show you that a lot of people seem to like, I myself included. And same as before, I'm just going to strip some of this back. to the other side Oop. see even I miss once in a while okay take a little bit more off there right. okay so I've got that all stripped back um, now I'm going to use one of the solder connectors or a uh, connector filled with solder and shrink tube, sort of a hybrid, uh, but I've got to select the appropriate size. You can see that this one is going to be a little bit large for the gauge wire that we're working with here, and this is an 18 gauge wire. A couple different sizes that I brought over is we have blue and red. They're typically three different colors, red, blue, green, and small, medium, large. Um, we can probably on this one go with our medium size and some guys like to go ahead and just leave these sort of fanned open and these will allow you to uh, go all the way through okay and so I've got half of it in there and I am going to twist these because it does make it a little bit easier okay. And so I put those in there. Um, now I just go back to that heat gun. And what you're looking for, I'm going to turn it up a little higher, is you're looking for that uh, solder right in the middle here. It's going to melt. You can see the shrink tube beginning to fall down onto that wire. going to take some patience and you notice how I have the, uh, the heat gun angled. I have it aiming away from the wiring harness. And I'm getting it pretty close and there it goes. It's, the solder is, is melting now. Okay. And what I'm going to do, I don't want to use my hand, um, but I'm going to try and get the rest of the shrink tube to melt down. You want to make sure that that melts all the way around, top and bottom. Okay. And keeping in mind that it is hot, I'm moving it away from the wiring harness. Okay. And that's going to do it. Uh, right there is a permanent repair. Uh, again, you have the solder in the middle of the connector 
and you have the shrink tube that goes over the entire assembly. Um, now the wire is crimped together. I would never use crimping pliers, but it is repaired. Uh, it's soldered, which puts the least amount of resistance back in the connection, along with being sealed up by shrink tube. Okay. So that is a good repair. Uh, a lot of techs like to use those. And of course, remember our last step is going to be to uh, tape up the harness. And there you go. Um, you can't tell that anyone was ever even in there and the repair is correct. We verified operation of our power window motor and everything's working great. So uh, these are the methods that uh, technicians use in the field to repair wire and seal it up so that it's a long lasting repair.